Tessa from Mama's Geeky here. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel. Um, we are here to celebrate the brand new film Space Jam, A New Legacy, opening on July 16th in theaters and HBO Max. Today, we have the incredible Eric Baza, who will be teaching you how to draw some of your very favorite Looney Tune characters. Eric started his career in animation as a character designer, working with a few production studios in Hollywood. It was an introduction to the animation world that led him to a successful career as one of the most in-demand voiceover artists in town. Um, in this new film, Eric voices the iconic characters of Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, Foghorn Leghorn, and so many more. Um, he's going to give you a little sampling of that today. So please, everyone, give a good shout out and a wave to Eric. And without further ado, Eric, I'm going to throw it over to you. Hey, Tari. What's up, Docs? How are you guys? Uh, my name is Eric, uh, and I am just so happy and lucky to be here with you guys today. Thank you for joining us. And I hope you guys are super excited about the movie as, as, as much as I am. You're talking about a kid who grew up watching the original Space Jam movie in 1996. I'm 41 years old. I got a five-year-old boy, uh, my son, Riker. Uh, who I wish could have joined us today, um, but he's at a swimming lesson right now. Uh, but uh, yeah, to, to know that I get to experience this movie again uh, in, a, in a whole new, and in so many different ways, you know, as, as a dad, uh, as a parent, um, as a... As Daffy Duck as well, you know, I, I do Daffy Duck in the movie, you know. I, I know you guys are here to hear voices, not to hear me speak. Who wants to hear boring old Eric talk? Not me. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I just, I, I just love these characters uh, for so many reasons. And uh, number one, I grew up watching the original Looney Tunes cartoons, uh, and, and they were uh, directed by people like Chuck Jones, Bob Clampett, Tex Avery, Frizz Freeling, uh, and they were all voiced by one guy, Mel Blank, and, and he was the original voices of these characters. And the amount of work that they put into these characters, we're still talking about it 80 years later. Bugs Bunny is now 80 years old, if you can believe it. I, I cover all my wrinkles with fur on my face, Doc. That's the secret. <laughs> Who needs Botox? Uh, but um, yeah, it, it's kind of incredible uh, that, that these characters have stood the, the, the test of time. And uh, they coincidentally just look great around basketball players and sell uh, really cool t-shirts. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's not a secret. Uh, but yeah, today uh, I'm gonna share some knowledge that, that I learned from these characters with you. Uh, not only did I learn how to do funny voices by watching Looney Tunes, I actually learned how to draw. Uh, long before the age of the internet, uh, they used to have these things called mail away catalogs that you would have to, uh, you know, send away for. And I used to uh, uh, love uh, animation cells. They, they used to be like these still frames from the cartoons. And I would just like, much like this, it would be like a, like a little catalog or a magazine. Did you guys get one of these too? Yeah, if you like look through it, like this is my favorite page right here is like the page that has all the characters. It's just amazing to see how like well designed they are. And uh, did you guys want to try to draw some of these characters? So uh, I think today I'm going to draw Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, woohoo! And my favorite Martian, Marvin. Marvin the Martian, isn't that lovely, Earth creature? Uh, uh, I've been voicing Marvin for about 10 years now. So uh, the longest Looney Tune I've, uh, I've had the chance to voice. So I'm gonna start off with maybe uh, the, the most popular, but one of the most actually hard to draw characters, Bugs. Um, I say that because he has all these like, you know, he's very memorable looking. He has all these like shapes that kind of converge into like one area of his face and that's his nose. So if you guys have your pencil and paper ready, we're gonna start this little drawing lesson here. Uh, we're gonna start off with drawing a very, you know, doesn't have to be perfect, but kind of like an egg shape, like an oval right there. If you guys can kind of see that, like a bit of a, bit of an oval. 
And then we're going to do like a bit of an access line down the center of that oval to give us a little bit of, uh, you know, perspective. Now, down towards the bottom of that oval, not here's the middle, but like not the end, but like right about here, we're going to draw like a little circle. And that's going to be like Bugs Bunny's little nose and his muzzle area, like the front of his mouth. And you're going to, this looks like a, a weird drawing now, but boy, in just a few more uh, pencil strokes, uh, it's going to turn into, into Bugs Bunny. So from there, we're going to add like a bit of a, 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 a curve here. This is going to be like his outer cheek. Like that. And then on the other side of this like little circle, we're going to do like kind of like uh, his, his other cheek, but you know, like when you kind of like look at someone, this side of the cheek is much bigger because that's the side that's closest to our point of view, right? So this cheek's gonna be actually a little bit smaller, but they're both gonna meet down towards that access line to make his chin. Do you guys see that? It's kind of like you got one cheek here, and then we're gonna do the other cheek here, keeping in mind this oval shape. And then, you know, we'll continue. We're gonna add the eyes now. And much like the cheek, the eyes will be kind of like different sizes. So this one in the distance is a bit smaller. And then this one's gonna be a bit bigger because it's closer to us. We'll head back down to the bottom of the, the little oval here, the little muzzle. We're gonna add his teeth. And on that same axis line, his teeth will meet in the middle. You know, these big old teeth, I use them to eat carrots. And you know, you could start taking some lines away uh, so you can kind of see a little bit better. Uh, I'm gonna add his smile line cheek. Kind of does the opposite. It kind of curves in like that. And then we're going to do the other side. Again, it's going to be a bit smaller. It's not going to be as big. Let's uh, move back up and fill in those eyes with this pupil. So now we kind of get a sense. You know, he's kind of always giving us that classic Bugs Bunny side eye. He's looking at us. So inside, uh, once you've completed those pupils, inside that little muzzle, we're going to kind of draw a line here and then a little bunny nose he's got like a little triangle nose and we will round out the muzzle let's start taking some some lines out there so far so good all right we're going to join his cheek here to meet his eyebrow and his other eyebrow and then on this cheek towards the back, towards the back of the oval, we'll join his cheek with like the back of his head. And we'll take this in just a little bit. And that's, uh, and that's like the top of his head right there. And Bugs Bunny's uh, classic hairstyle. I got three little tufts of hair right about here, Doc. So one, two, three. And this is the part that always, uh, you know, I always forget about how big his ears are. His ears are about like a head and a half. So it's like one and then like half of that. So see, I almost, I almost ran out of space. Can't forget about Bugs Bunny's big ears. And he's got another, another ear that comes out like that. Then you could draw the inner workings of the ear. like so and we got to give those cheeks some fur so he has like those like little furry cheeks one two three one two three now you could keep his mouth closed like this but i think he always has his you know a big smile on his face so let's let's draw like a bottom line here for the edge of the inside of his mouth and then we'll do another smaller line to outline his bottom lip and we can draw his tongue. And if you'd like, 
to not have a floating head, we can draw his neck like that. Ooh, almost forgot the finishing piece, his whiskers. So he's got six whiskers, three on each side of his little muzzle here. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And uh, that's the most handsome rabbit I've ever seen. Hopefully you guys uh, have, a, have a, a very similar image on your, on your screens or on, on, on your pages. We'll save them. Let's take a look. Oh my gosh, we got some pretty good ones out there. Look at that. That's amazing, you guys. Wow. wow. Whoa, I got some, I see some future animators in, in our audience today. Not bad, bad. not bad. That is incredible. We got to hire these people for Space Jam 3. Clearly. Um, so that's Bugs. Did you guys want to move Good on work. to another character? Similar to, to Bugs, we're going to start Daffy with an oval type shape for his head. And again, it's so interesting once you break down these characters and see how they work. Then again, we're going to put that line down the center of that oval to kind of give it that perspective. It doesn't have to be that thick. And again, it's, you know, I, I see my son draw sometimes and he gets, he gets so darn frustrated when he's like, oh, it's not perfect. And I'm like, son, don't worry. It's okay to make mistakes. You learn from them. So from here, again, about the same place where we had Bugs Bunny's muzzle, in, instead of drawing that little circle, we're gonna do like a straight line going out this way. And then from that straight line in that area, we're gonna start to flesh out kind of like the same thing that we did for Bugs, like a cheek. But of course, Daffy Duck doesn't have furry cheek. He has a duck bill. And that's why I talk like this. And then we're going to do the inner part of that smile line like that. From there, we're going to draw like another line coming down here with a bit of a curve like that, if you can see that. And then we're going to draw his eye on the other side of his bill. And then the other eye, which is closer to us, so it's going to be slightly bigger. And since we're here, we might as well just fill in those eyes with his pupils. So this is the fun part. Once you've done that, we're going to join these lines here sort of like in, in a bill. So we're going to take this bottom line and we're going to swoop up with a bit, another bit of a curve like that. And uh, I always like looking at Daffy's duck bill as like, like that hat, like the way a hat works. It kind of if you've ever seen it in a photo, it kind of tucks under like that. And then uh, we'll finish the duck bill like that. He's got like one of his nostrils there. We can do the other cheek, which again is smaller because it's, it's further away from our eye line. And he's got like another tiny laugh line. We're gonna join that bill with an eyebrow, do the other eyebrow. And much like bugs, we're gonna join the the back of his head to his, you know, the, the back cheek, the back bill. And we're gonna finish off drawing the top of his head. And Bugs and Daffy must go to the same hairstylist because they have the same three tufts of hair right here. One, two, three. <coughs> Excuse me. And of course, Daffy, he loves to smile, this guy. So, <coughs> excuse me, let's give him the the big old smile like that. We'll do the bottom lip. And finish out the cheek like so. And we got to put that big old flubbery tongue in here. And of course, he draws his neck. And like every duck, he's got a little, a little collar. And if you if you want to have extra fun, we can kind of color them in with our with your pencil or whatever it is you're you're drawing with today to make them look extra daffy. And there is my good old friend Daffy Duck. Woohoo! 
Hopefully you guys uh, also have uh, some daffies on your tables. Let's see. Oh my goodness, a good job guys. Wow, I am impressed. I you am guys, impressed too. You guys are good. Wow. Incredible. All right, we're, we're ready for round three of your drawing lesson today. And we're gonna end it on, uh, I thought would be like an easy character, but like as I draw him more and more today, I'm like, man, that, that helmet that he has, Marvin the Martian right here. He's kind of like a, like a, like a bowling ball with eyes. It's kind of funny. We're gonna start not with an oval, but with a circle. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put a, an, a, a vertical access line here. And rather than, you know, his, his face is quite simple. It's just like a little round ball with eyes. So why don't we start constructing the helmet? So this is gonna be the bottom part of the visor. So about just over halfway on the circle, we're gonna put kind of like a curved line that kind of comes in here. And that is the visor of his helmet, which kind of meets on the helmet with a hinge. It's like a small circle, kind of like that. Now that we have that hinge, we could do the top part of the visor and it kind of fans out like that. And then from there, we can kind of finesse it a bit and do like the, the inner the inner ridge of that. Now we can kind of define where his face is. And then uh, his helmet kind of has like these little these little side side flaps here for extra protection against uh, against his foes Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny. I, can, I claim this planet in the name of Mars. And then you could use that kind of edge to do like the other uh, side flap of his helmet that comes down. And again, it's all in perspective. So it's gonna be slightly smaller than the one that sees our, uh, in the foreground that we see here. Now that we kind of have this working like his helmet, we're gonna put in those eyes. And I think, you know, Marvin has always been seen as quite the villainous character. I mean, he's, he's adorable, but he's always like got that kind of suspicious look in his eyes. So we're gonna give him those ridged eyebrows that kind of go over the, the ridge of the helmet. And then this one kind of goes over like that. And then we can, define the bottom of his face even more. And then now with that like kind of like lightly uh, outer circle that we did, we can kind of darken those lines a bit so you can see the back of the helmet. Now on the top of his helmet, he's got this like little, looks like a little push broom, you know, like when you when you sweep in the kitchen or wherever outside. He's got a little little uh, push broom that is held onto the helmet with like a little stick and we'll do like a rectangle in perspective. And I know guys, if I'm, if I'm going too fast, let me know, but this is, this is years of couch potatoing you're witnessing. I've studied these characters on my couch and my TV for years. So we're going to do the bottom. That's the bottom part of the, the, the brush on his head. We're going to do the sides. And then the fun part, we get to put the bristles. They kind of fan out. Kind of like that. One's always kind of like shorter. You could put as many lines on the side for the bristles as you'd like. And that's kind of uh, Marvin the Martian right there. We can also color in his face a little bit. like so. Isn't that lovely? Do you suppose all earth creatures behave like that? Yeah, this is, uh, this is like, again, one of my favorite characters. Oh my gosh, so good. Wow, I love it. Look at those Marvins, I love it. You guys are so talented. Give yourselves a round of applause 
you guys just took a Looney Tunes crash course in animation, and I feel like Warner Brothers should be taking some numbers from uh, this little chat here for future animators. Congratulations, guys. So I would love to know, when you're recording voices, do you kind of go through the script doing each voice, or do you go through and do one character at a time so that they can cut them together? That's a pretty good question. Um, sometimes I, I like to talk to myself, especially in traffic. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it, it wouldn't be, and it wouldn't be hard for me to talk to myself in three different voices. Uh, but sometimes for accuracy, they do like to go down the line and do one character at a time. But uh, I am more than capable of making silly voices, and I encourage you all to do the same thing. What is your favorite character that you ever made? Oh, boy. Oh, man, that is a good question. I mean, uh, I, I've, I've been blessed with the luck of working with a ton of characters that we all know uh but looney tunes will always be my favorite and i have to say it's it's a 50 50 battle right now between daffy duck and uh bugs bunny i mean who doesn't like a rabbit with uh, these cute little whiskers and these little tiny nose and the big ears yeah that's and, uh, right. yeah and daffy duck too he's so funny he, he gets so he gets so angry at the drop of a dime and it's it's he gets himself uh, himself into these funny situations and you know i just think he's one of the funniest characters ever made and um it's i i'm not as much as a, a loud mouth as daffy but i love playing him in the booth i get to play like this funny you know funny character uh, and especially in this movie coming out i hope you guys really do get a chance to see uh, space jam a new legacy because it's been a long time since the Looney Tunes have been on the big screen. And uh, they really, uh, the filmmakers really did a good job with it. But thank you, what a great question. What Looney Tunes character is most like you and why? Oh boy, that is it. Like, another great question. There, there's so many different personalities in Looney Tunes. Uh, it's hard to pick just one. I think generally Bugs Bunny, because he's usually just, he doesn't bug anybody. He, he kind of just stays in his rabbit hole. He's pretty chill. Uh, but if you bug him, then he'll bug you back. Uh, at lunchtime, I'm like Taz. I like to eat everything without chewing. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and again, Daffy Duck, uh, he, <laughs> he's just so funny. He, it's, it's funny to see like that comedic kind of like greedy kind of, he's, he's a bit of a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's kind of like a frenemy. Uh, I think we all have frenemies, uh, you know, <laughs> but uh, but again, he, he's very redeemable sometimes. He'll definitely have a change of heart. And I think that's why we like these characters because they're not always perfect. They always have their, their little faults, but they always like learn their lesson. They always kind of come back uh, and they kind of help us and they teach us lessons. And especially they kind of like, I think I'm a lot like all of these characters because they make me laugh and I like to make people laugh. Yeah, thank, thank you guys. Show, folks. Thank you so much to all of my monetary supporters, my members here on YouTube, as well as my patrons. If you haven't joined yet, please consider doing so. We have some really awesome perks, including a monthly Zoom meeting where we get to talk face to face. Thank you again to everyone who supports me.